Hello YouTube, this is Yusuf Airsofter93 and this video is going to be how to paint your airsoft gun and how to do a good job on it. On it. I have a second D-Boy scar and it was a black one. I decided to paint it because I'm not a huge fan of all black guns so I figured why not. I have my workhorse gun, the tan one and I got this other one for a pretty good price and thought hey I'll paint it up and make it look nice so it is a blue tiger pattern and a lot of you are probably going to realize that from modern warfare and talk about how modern warfare doesn't correlate with real military or any kind of realistic stuff at all and I couldn't agree with you more so I would appreciate it if I don't get bashed about it but I decided to do this pattern just because I think it looks neat and I like the Air Force so the whole blue the whole blue effect kind of, you know, went along with how it looks. So I'm going to show you the gun and then tell you how I did it. This is it, and it might be kind of hard to see because I have bad lighting. But there you can see the pattern that's on it. On this side. You can see the blue tiger. Now, one of my first pet peeves that I have when I see people painting guns first off is they'll take their gun some random people on YouTube I've seen they'll lay the gun out in the yard and they'll just start spraying the whole thing all different colors they won't tape a thing off they'll just put the whole gun there and start spraying it colors that's where my first problem begins they didn't really take their time they just put it out in the weather and just start spraying it without caring what they get painted what they don't paint and I mean hey some people might like that some people might like a gun that's just all green or completely brown or whatever camo pattern you try to do some people might like that I honestly think that's too much I think it's too much to have the whole gun camouflage like every little piece and everything so the first thing I do is take the gun apart I took everything off of this upper receiver that I possibly could. I took off the stock, I took off the lower receiver, took off the whole front assembly that's connected with the bottom rail, took the side rails off, the barrel locks off, I took the brass deflector off. I They have these, there's a couple of the screws, I don't know if you can see them, they're there. Um, on the other side there's a bunch. But there's only actually on this upper receiver, like near the back, like see there's two there, and then on this side, there's three there, and then a couple more there. Only the back one there, the one on the top, and that one are actually real screws. The other ones are just like kind of imitated to make it look like how the actual gun would be. So you can't take those out, but I taped those off and then was able to paint over that. So it kept paint off of those parts that on the real thing would come off. So from there then, instead of just putting my gun down and spraying it all over the place, I actually took time and taped it off. I took blue painters masking tape and instead of like cutting it, like if you look at this close enough, you can see how all the lines on it are jagged. This is because I didn't just cut the tape with scissors and lay it on. I actually manually like ripped each piece and laid it on so the sides were all rough and it gives it more of a you know natural tiger rough looking effect rather than just a straight cut smooth line and that adds so much extra effect that I mean, it just makes the gun pop. So that's my first thing that I have. People just sticking it out there and just spraying it all over the place. The other part of that that I don't like is people, first of all, just doing it outside. Because when you spray it outside, you're subject to wind and all kinds of other elements that could possibly screw up how the paint lays. Now, I'm fortunate and my dad has a spray room to do like cabinet work and stuff but I mean I can paint it in there 
and I can get really nice finishes because I don't have to worry about wind or dust or any kind of debris or anything. So I have that. People on YouTube, I know, not everybody has a spray room handy. So, but best bet, look at the weather. Try not to do it when the wind's blowing much, or if you can, like, go in your garage and set it inside of a box, like a big box or something so that you don't have to worry about too much wind or anything. That's going to make the finish on your gun look so much better. Another thing is choosing the right colors. You don't want to put a gloss finish on your gun because it's going to be all shiny and it's going to look really bad out on the field. So make sure you get either military flat colors if you're going for the standard green, brown, gray, black, tan effect. And if you want to do something more exotic like this blue, or I have red too, make sure you get them in like, if you, probably the best thing you can get is be like Krylon, it's like Krylon satin finish. And that's like a semi-flat finish. And this, the color that this blue is, it actually matched the finish of the black that was stock on this gun. So it, it matches up really well and it looks really nice. So just make sure you get flat or satin colors. The cap will indicate what the finish is like. As long as it's not shiny, you should be all right. If it's flat, it's, it's good. Um, what else? Make sure when you spray it, you do very light coats. You don't want to have real heavy coats because you don't want any runs. And if you do it lighter, it'll dry quicker. You can get more on. It'll be a better finish. And you're going to just look more like so much more so much better than if you just have gobs and gobs gobs of paint everywhere so just light coats be careful keep it taped off take it apart if you can and it'll make your gun look a lot better it'll look nice like this and not all not completely crappy I also did a magazine for this gun the magazine that it came with I painted that Blue Tiger too, just to give that a little bit of effect. Um, oh, if you're gonna paint your whole gun, some places I would recommend not to paint though would be the motor grip or hand grip, depending on if you're using a bolt action gun with a hand grip. And also, I wouldn't paint the cheek riser or a foregrip or hand guard if you don't use that. I would leave those open because if not, it might wear off and it might not look good unless you like wearing off. I mean, I realize a lot of people like stuff to look battle worn. And, I mean, I'm kind of like that too. Like metal magazines, like I think they look pretty cool when they're all scratched up and stuff. But as far as this receiver goes, I really don't want it scratched. So that's about it for painting. I think that's about it. Oh, I painted. I had a metal flash hider, and I play out in public a lot. So I want to make sure I have a good one for flash hider. So I just painted that some flat fluorescent orange. And then it's just gray primer flash hider. I like my flash hiders being different colors. Just because, I mean, like the orange, I don't, I don't like the orange. I mean, that has to, that kind of has to be on there. And I, I would rather it not be, but just as a base, I'd rather a different color than the gun. Because I just think it looks cool. Like my tan one has the green, the uh, green flash hider and this one I just painted flat primer gray and I think it looks cool it looked neat because then I put my my skull candy urban assault sticker on there and that's flat gray so I mean this gun it just it looks really cool it it looks really nice I mean it's not it's not upgraded much in any way at all I mean I have it painted that's about it but I mean It looks great. I mean, it's it's it's, a, it's kind of a loner gun. I let other people use it. I use I use my really fast gun. So, but that is it. If you have any other questions on how I painted this gun, or how to paint another gun, or recommendations of what I think you should paint for certain parts of a gun, like if you're doing an M4, I'd love to paint an M4. If you have an M4 you want an M4 you want painted, send it to me. I'll paint it for you. I really want to do an M4. But, uh, yeah, if you have any questions or 
comments about how I did anything or what you should do to paint it, just feel free to comment. Alright, thanks for watching. Comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. Goodbye.